Welcome back to my channel. I'm Trabin, and in today's video, we'll be doing a review for Andrea Tang's These Deadly Prophecies. This is another title I picked up because it is a Barnes & Noble YA book club book. These Deadly Prophecies follows Tabitha Zhang, who is a prophet in training under Sorcerer Solomon and has to investigate his murder after he has predicted it and he passes away. What was the meaning behind his final prophecy where he says something to the effect of, I'll be killed by my dearest love. Who's his dearest love? Is it his ex-wife? Is it his current wife? Is it one of his children? Is it magic itself? Unfortunately, those questions are one, never answered, and two, given the way that the book is structured, I don't think that an answer to that question would ever be really satisfying. I've been discussing with my wife recently different types of books within the mystery genre. So I just finished up Mushroom Blues, which was a detective fiction story. Uh, we were reading through everyone on this train as a suspect. There are some very distinct subcategories of mystery fiction, some that work for me and some that don't. And I feel like this book, unfortunately, presented itself as one type of mystery, but was actually another type of mystery. So what do I mean by that? The way the book is set up with this prophetic death, this enigmatic message from the person who was going to pass away, seems to suggest that by paying close attention, by following clues, by listening to what characters are saying, it would be reasonable for you to figure out what had happened. But that's not what this book is. This book is just a on rails, you follow the story, you don't have enough information to make informed guesses about what has happened to this character. At the beginning of the story, they very quickly gloss over the way that magic works within this world. So we've got three major categories of magic. You've got the prophets who can see the future, You've got kinetic magic, which is any magic that can actually physically move things or physically interact with the world. And you have illusion magic. And we don't go into much depth at all about how any of those magics work or what a mage is capable of creating within this world. So when we are given these revelations about what characters have actually been doing. You just have to accept it at face value that these things have always been possible, that these things are things you can do with magic. There's a reveal about Solomon and his prophecies, and someone else is actually, someone else has actually been doing his prophecies for him for some time, and so it puts extra weight on this prophecy because it was not coming from Solomon and so the idea of who the dearest love was could be Solomon or it could be the other person who was making the prophecy which is interesting sure it makes for a good turn in the book the problem is until that character tells you oh yeah I've been doing prophecies for this person, you are unaware that, that is even something that characters are capable of doing within this world. And I feel like it comes off less as a shocking twist and more as a rug pull. That's just one example of how the rather vague and ill-defined magic system within this story works against the plot. There's also a romance in the book, of course, because romanticy is the flavor of the moment when it comes to YA books. And this one 
didn't work for me much at all. The characters did not seem to have much chemistry, further complicated by the idea of you know, prophecy, of things being preordained. For the longest time, it felt like the characters would go just from acquaintances to friends, and that I was fine with. For the very end, we start getting these very predictable plot beats where our point of view character is no longer just talking about the other character as a friend, but suddenly realizes that they have feelings for them. And it felt really rushed. It felt incomplete. If you're going to have the subplot of these two characters are going to fall for each other and they're going to get together, you need to have something more than just they're put into peril with one another. It feels really uncomfortable that the only thing that seems to be driving these two characters together is their mutual hunt for this killer and their you know, mutual near-death experiences. Characters were very flat in this novel. The story is only a little over 200 pages long so length might have played some role in that there's not enough time to go into depth with these characters there's not enough time to adequately explore and build up your world in a satisfying way right before the final reveal which ends up not really being about solomon at all where a character does something very elaborate and very interesting from a magic system world building viewpoint but from a character viewpoint it doesn't make any sense why this character would act this way they're effectively framing another party for the murder and terrorizing two other individuals possibly even uh, threatening their lives and then almost immediately turning around and asking for forgiveness and we're supposed to suddenly relate to this character the perceived mistreatment that they have experienced and it doesn't work for so many reasons narratively it's find that that character ends up being the one who's responsible for the death in that moment the very convoluted actions that they're taking don't seem to serve any purpose other than to give us a bit of a climax and further confuse what's going on in the story. I did not care much for this book. I ended up giving it three stars out of five. I did find aspects of the world and the magic systems fun. There were some developments that heightened the tension in a believable way, but overall, especially due to the end and the unresolved nature of the central mystery. It was an unsatisfying read on a number of different levels. I wish the world building had been a little bit stronger, the magic system a little bit more defined. I wish the characters had been a little bit more fleshed out. And I definitely wish that the mystery was something that you were able to solve instead of just something that you're kind of plotting along with these characters until they finally figure it out. It's not something that I could recommend very highly. It's going to do it for our look at these deadly prophecies. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so we can feed that algorithm. If you'd like to look at some of my other reviews for the YA book clubs, I'll place a few reviews here of things I've looked at in the past. As always, I hope your reading journey is going well. And until the next one, Take care.